Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. One more time. Amen. Woo. That was not me, just for the record. I've got the power, but not that much. Amen. 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 It's good to see you this morning. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. How many of you are prayed up? How many of you came with an expectation that you believe God is going to do something real, something powerful? Then if you came with that expectation, I believe this morning that you're not going to leave disappointed. I believe you're going to leave encouraged. I believe you're going to leave uplifted. I believe you're going to leave blessed this morning. Amen. How many of you know we serve a great and a mighty God? Oh, yeah. Amen. Some of you, some of you, some of you not sure yet. Amen. And he is a great and a mighty God. Amen. As I often say, it is a great day to be a child of God. If you brought your Bible, if you were, if you were able to stand, how about grab your Bible and, uh, and stand if you're able to and turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter chapter number four, Deuteronomy chapter number four, as we open uh, up our service this morning. Amen. And verse number 39 says this, it says, know therefore this day and, uh, and, and, and consider it and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Let me read that one more time, can I? Um, he says, know therefore this day, amen, this day. Say this day. Look at your neighbor, say this day, amen. Consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. You see, I think sometimes that we forget uh, that who God really is. I do believe that. I believe sometimes we, we, we have maybe a lot and whatever and we really forget about who God is because sometimes I believe we get to looking at our circumstances and we forget who God is. We get to looking uh, um, at the report of, um, of the doctor or whomever and we forget who God is. Uh, amen. And if we're not careful we will allow ourselves um, to play with this idea and this notion that, that there is another power, that there is another one. Uh, but I just want to remind somebody this morning uh, as Moses was saying uh, there there is none other. Amen. There is only one true God. And we are here this morning to worship Him, to glorify Him. There is only one true God and there's only one plan. Amen. He has a plan established and set for each and every one of us. Amen. And we just need to find that direction. We need to find that plan. We need to walk according to His Word. We need to walk, amen, with His anointing. And that is what will make all of the difference for each one of us. Uh, I just want to remind you this morning uh, there is none else. Uh, there's only one God uh, and that is the God that we are here to serve. Uh, can we just give him some hand clap of praise this morning? Uh, can we glorify him uh, as we open up our service? Uh, amen with prayer. Father we love you this morning and we thank you for your blessings. We thank you uh, for there is no other. There is no other name under heaven. There is no other power. There is no other one uh, who can and take your place for you are the supreme you are the God you are the one that has that plan for each one of us father you are the one that loved us with an everlasting love that you sent your only begotten son that we could have life and have that life abundantly father we desire this morning to function and operate with under your love and under your grace and under your mercy as we welcome you into this house come into this place this morning and inhabit the praises of your people that we might glorify you in all that we have and all that we are today we thank you we praise you Lord as we welcome you into this place in Jesus name we pray amen amen
Sunday, and I've got some issues that I won't talk about. He does, but I don't talk about them. But if I can make it through this, I'm going to do my best. Uh, if I can remember the words. What was the name of the song, David? Oh, yeah. One more valley. Let's go. When 
When I'm tossed on life's sea And the waves cover me And the dark clouds Won't let the sun shine through Then a voice seems to say Child, it'll be a brighter day Don't allow the sun One more, one more hill, maybe one more trial, one more tear, one more tear, one more girl in life's road, maybe one more mile to go, you can lay down your heavy load when you get home. And see your tears Learn to smile through your fears Hold your head up high And give the world a smile Just be faithful all the way It'll be worth it all someday For it's all going to be over after a Cause you've got one more valley, one more hill, one more hill, maybe one more trial, one more tear, one more tear, one more hurt in life's road, maybe one more. the Lord. We have to walk by faith and not by sight and not by emotions. Emotions will deceive you. You'll be here and then here and here and here if you go on emotions. I want you to do something for me. I want you to take a deep breath. Hold it. No, let it out. <laughs> They were checking me the other day, and they said, take a deep breath, hold it. How long am I have to hold it to? But let it out. So you have breath this morning, don't you? Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. I'd like for us to do that just for a moment this morning. Just in your own way, would you just praise him? Just magnify him, glorify him. Thank you, God, for your presence here today. Thank you, God, for your touch here today, Father. Thank you, God, for your love here this morning, Father. God, you said let everything, and God, I have breath, so I praise you. I have a right to praise you, God, because who you are and what you've done. I have a right to praise you, God, because you've been so good. You've been so faithful to us, Lord. And we give you honor, and we give you praise, and we give you glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Will you turn around to somebody and give them a big old smile? I believe, I believe some people in here need somebody to smile at them sometimes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 14. And 15, would you stand for the reading of the word, if you can? We're doing calisthenics up and down, up and down. 
Now therefore, fear the Lord. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the blood and in Egypt and serve you the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve God. One thing I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's what I want. I will follow Him. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to have you this morning. All the other folks, God bless you. You may be seated. You may God add His anointing to this Word. I want to stand up here this morning because i got some things I want to look at and I want to talk to you about. I'm not going to promise you I won't come down there where you're at, but I hope I can just deliver a message from here this morning. I want to talk about compromise. Compromise accepts standards that are lower than is desirable. Compromise. Compromise seems to be the thing of our generation and of our time. People who are in political powers, politicians many times, go to Washington with the right intent, with a good heart, and they want to make a difference. Anybody here want to make a difference in your world and those around you? But sometimes they sell out and change their vote and betray those people they represent. Even Christian leaders use their power to persuade, to change people, to put pressure on, on folks to get what they desire. People compromise their standards, and their beliefs for gain. The church today in many ways have compromised from the word of the Lord. And they've tried to change the Word of God. They try to tell you that the Word of God, I believe Scripture needs to interpret Scripture. They try to change the Word of God saying, He didn't mean that. He didn't mean this. But I believe the Bible says what it means. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. Why don't you listen to Paul? Paul had been saved, delivered, set free. He persecuted the church. But listen to what he said. He said, I'm a debtor, both to the Greeks, to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I'm ready. I love that word ready there. The Ricket means there's a burning, consuming desire that I have to preach this gospel to you. It's like a wild horse that's in a pen that's the gate's open and he runs with all his might. God help us to get that fire again, to get that zeal again, to get that determination again and that hunger again to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. We get caught up in just going through the routines, passing people by, never talking about Jesus, never affecting anybody's life that we're close to or around us. But I think we need to make a difference for God every day. So as much as in me, as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He got his chance. He was in prison and house arrest. He says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteous God revealed from faith to faith. It is written, the just shall live by faith. Can I hear an amen? amen. For, we, 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, listen now, they glorified him not as God, neither was, were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the, of the uncorruptible God into the image that made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four, four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through, through lust of their own heart and dishonor to their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie who took the word of God and twisted it, who took the word of God and and promoted their own desires and their own zeal and their own will and their own plans for their gain and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Next verse. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, Fornication, wickedness, covetousness. You could read all this. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Even our churches, all of them, every denomination, many cases have changed the truth of God into a lie. Have compromised in some area. Who have given in to self-will and self-desires who use their power to press what is not right upon people. God's word cannot be changed. It is settled forever in the heavens. The Bible says in Psalms 11989, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. God will not change his word for you. God will not change his word for me. God will never change his word. Matter of fact, it is closed. It's a fact. It's a closed canon. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. The word of God is forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will endure throughout eternity. The Word of God. Who is the Word of God? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's all about Christ. This Word centers around Christ. It's His Word. His Word is unstoppable. God will not change His Word for us here today. The Bible clearly instructs us not to compromise God's standard. What is God's standard? Boy, it's a word that we don't like to use anymore. It's called holiness. Yeah. Holiness. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Glory. Oh, Lord thy God. Glory. Be holy even as your Father which in heaven is holy. Yeah. You can't do that in yourself. But he became sin for us who knew no sin. That we may be made the righteous of God. If there's any holy thing, in it, any righteous thing in us. It's Him living in us. Not we living it out, but Him living in us and through us. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and 1, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord 
Blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with their whole heart. They also do not iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Live the word out. Don't be just hear the word. Be doers of the word. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto thy commandments. The word is settled. We have meetings. We talk about changing insurance. We talk about changing colors of carpet. We talk about whether we want pews or chairs. We talk about the color of the walls. We talk about the lights. We talk about this. We talk about that. But the word of God is not up for debate. But in many cases, I said in many cases, there's compromise. There's compromise. God expects those committed to him in his ways to be uncompromising because his word is our primary source of instruction and authority. You know what Jesus said to the devil? It is written, God honors his word. He'll even give signs and wonders to confirm the word. The word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is foolishness to man, stumbling block to some. But Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation. Our devotion to God and, he, and his ways leave no room for deviation. We've got to stay in the word. We've got to walk in the truth. Yes. We can't be ashamed of the gospel. We can't compromise his word. Because we're going to stand before God one day. Yes. And the book is going to be open. And another book is going to be open. And I believe the word of God is going to be open. I believe we will be judged according to the deeds committed in our body. I believe we will be judged according to the word of the Lord. He said, I will hide thy word in my heart. I may not sin against you. This is not an easy sermon to preach. We study and know God's ways, his instruction, his expectation. We can give a reason for the hope that we have within us. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was dead, but now I'm alive. I was a walking dead man for the first 15 years of my life, but the last years, many years, I'm in Christ. I have joy. That devil lied to me. He told me, he said, now you, you, you get saved at 15 years old, you're going to give up the most important time of your life to have fun and sow your wild oats. May I tell you something? At 15, I come to the end of myself. I come to the end of myself. There was a crisis experience that I had. I had to have God. You know what? He changed me, the vile creature that I was. He changed you. We have a testimony. Hallelujah. We are to defend the faith. In 1 Peter 3 and 10. Let me just stop here. I'm sorry. Coming down. Don't compromise nothing. Don't compromise anything. Don't steal a pencil. What is a pencil? Oh, there ain't nothing to that. If you'll do wrong in one area, what will stop you? People sell out. 
their integrity, their faith, their belief. Daniel, the first chapter of Daniel, was taken into Babylon. He was one of the men that was chose to be a counselor, a leader, because the king would take the wisest people, the wisest, the, the brilliant, those that he thought would be the greatest. And they will give them the king's meat. And I know this, you know, to us it may seem simple. But Daniel said, I'm not going to eat that. He refused to eat the king's meat. And he told the guy that was over them, he said, feed us this, what God requires of us. Amen. You know what happened? Everybody knows. They were wiser than anybody else. They were better looking than anybody else. Maybe I need to eat that kind of food. I'll say that again. They were better looking than anybody else. Maybe I need to eat that kind of food. <laughs> Help me, folks. If it grow hair, I would. If it grow teeth, I would. From then on, he prospered. Oh, he had battles. But when the king said, don't pray to anybody but only to the king, you're getting compromised. Guys, are you getting this? He did not compromise. He went to it. You know, Jews pray three times a day. He went to his house. He opened up the windows. And he got down and he prayed. They caught him praying. They made the king put him in a den of lions. Not a lion's den, but a den of lions. They were angry. They were hungry. They were vicious. And they wanted to eat Daniel. But because he didn't compromise... God was with him. Amen. And God sent his angel yes. and closed the mouth of the lions. If you won't compromise, if you'll hold to the truth, if you'll do what God, if you'll live out the word, if you'll live this thing out in your life, Amen. in every area of your life, when people's watching, when people ain't watching you, because God is. Well, the king fasted and prayed all night. And, you know, that's easy to fast and pray all night. It's easy for me to fast from 10 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning. Somebody said if it, wasn't for, if, if it wasn't for getting hungry, I could fast. He went to the den the next morning. He said, oh, Daniel. I don't know where he expected Daniel to answer him or not. But so, Daniel, is thy God continually able to save you. Glory. Yes, king. I've done nothing wrong. Glory. Live forever, said king. He said, God has sent his angel. Glory. Didn't compromise. The people that had put him in that position were eaten by the lions. Glory. Another chapter where... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's not the real names. That's the, the Babylonian names. Everybody knows what they did. They didn't bow. And they didn't burn. You know what they told the king? Listen now, this is not compromising. It says, king, look forever. Listen to what it said. He said, we're not, you know, we're not worried about it. Let's tell you straight out. We will not bow. We may burn. But we're not going to give in. We're going to hold on. We're going to hold on to God's truth. We'll live for God whether we die or whether we live. Some people need to make up their mind. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You need to have a made up mind that I will not play games with my soul, my spirit. I won't compromise on the job. I won't compromise in the family. I won't compromise at church. I will stand what God. Paul said, I'm a debtor. 
to tell the truth. I'm a debtor to share this gospel with everybody. So I'm not ashamed of this. So the Greeks and the barbarians, the wise and the unwise. He said, I will not compromise, but I will preach the word of the Lord. The uncorruptible. The meat. The powerful word. For the word is powerful than a two-edged sword. It pierces even to the very depths of our spirit and mind and soul and and into the mars of our bones. The word of God is forever. See, help me, Lord. King Saul disobeyed God because he wanted to please the people. You know how hard it is to please people? We don't have a, we have maybe 60 here this morning. Our folks are coming back. God's going to send other people in. We're going to bring other people in. But if you try to please, if I tried to please every person here this morning, what a mess I'd be. Can't do it. So I guess I'm supposed to please God. You know, people think that their opinion is right. And people think that their opinion is God's opinion. And everybody is right in their own eyes. I don't know, how, I don't know where I got here, about how I got here. But I'll tell you something. Let God be the God of the church. He has the preeminence. He's the head. He has the preeminence. He is over the church. No compromising. No giving in. We are to be unmovable in our faith. Then 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Compromise in secret places. We say God will understand. It won't matter. Can I tell you something? It matters to God. Aaron, when Moses was on the mountain, Aaron compromised with the children of Israel and made them a golden calf. Moses came back down with Joshua, came back down from the mountain. Now, he had the Ten Commandments God had written. But he saw them worshiping the golden calf. Moses had a little problem with uh, getting angry. How many of you would have not got angry with all those people and them hard heads? Come on now. And he broke the commandments that God had written. God made him write the second ones. Can I tell you what? Can I tell you what Aaron said? Everybody, everybody knows it. I've said this before. Moses said, "What have you done, brother?" He said, "Well, they give me the gold, and I threw it in the fire, and out jumped the calf. I just threw it in the fire, and a calf jumped out." We're not responsible. Don't compromise your soul. You gain the whole world and lose your soul. What have you gained? Don't sell out for fame, popularity, money, power, prestige. The Bible says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For the thoughts in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, is not of the world. It's not, it's not of God, it's of the world. And those things will pass away. Moses missed the promised land because God says, speak to the rock and struck it. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, 
I don't want to skip around, Sister Dorothy. Listen now. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth from destruction. And many be there that go in thereat. Go straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth from the life. Listen now. And few there be that find it. The, the gospel is balanced. Don't turn left. Don't turn right. Listen now. Left is liberalism. Right is legalism. Left is compromising the truth. Right is taking the truth and becoming legal with it. Pharisaistic. Judging people. Comparing yourself among yourselves and you're not wise. Left is wrong and right is wrong. Yeah. Don't compromise. Stay on the straight. And some people, they harp on one thing all the time. That's not a balanced gospel. I believe we need to reprove. I believe we need to rebuke. I believe we need to exhort. I believe we need to preach in love. I, need, I believe we need to preach about faith. I believe we need to preach about sin. I believe we need to preach about love. I believe we need to preach about the, the whole game and everything. The Word of God. The Word of God. I've already talked about Daniel, the three Hebrew children. And I'll tell you something. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. What does the Word really say? That's what you need to find out. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. I want to tell you of something I dreamed one night. I told this a time or two in these 18 years. But just be patient with me, because some of you haven't heard it. I was about 17 years old. I was having a dream one night. And God was asking me questions. And I was answering them to the best of my ability. Behind me, the devil stood there with fire around him. And he was in like a tight suit. God asked me questions. I answered them. Finally, God asked me a question, and I said, well, what do you think about it? I was talking to the devil. He said, what he believed. I said, well, that's good. That's a good answer. Everything changed. I looked around. And he was no longer surrounded by a fire. And he was no longer bound. But he was set on a throne. He leaned over. Put his Ebon said, I got you. I got you. I think God was trying to tell me, don't compromise. Don't compromise. I choose to live for God today. I choose to live for God tomorrow. I choose to do what's right. I fail God. Is there anybody here that don't fail God miserably? Is there anybody here that don't need the propitiation for our sins? Is there anybody here that don't need a go-between? There's one man between God and man, that's the man Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our sins. I'm talking about people after you get saved. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A little bit of lie is a lie. A little of anything that's wrong is wrong. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe somebody over television. Maybe somebody in here. I don't know, but I know God gave me this message. We live in a time of compromise. We live in a time when right is wrong. 
and wrong is right. When up is down, down is up with, when that which is inside is out, and that which is out is inside, that which is white is black, and that which is black is white. And I'm not talking about our color of skin. I'm talking about all the other things. We live in a compromised world. But Joshua told the people, saying, if you, if you think it's evil to serve God, choose you who you'll serve. I believe he probably said, if you do, somewhere along the way, if you do, you're going to be in trouble. Choose you this day. If you'll be faithful like Daniel was in chapter 1, God will be with you every chapter, every step of the way. He will carry you when you can't walk. Would you do me a favor? Would you just lift your hands and praise him? Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your love and mercy. Hallelujah. 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 He gained the whole world. It's going to pass away. Would you reach over and take your neighbor by the hand if you feel comfortable doing that? I want to pray for you. Father, this morning, you gave me this message. And I know you did. And I pray God help us to stand for you. Help us to not compromise. Help us, God, to live out. Be strong and be powerful in you, Lord. No matter what kind of pressure. No matter what kind of pressure. God, help us to live it right. In Jesus' name. I'm going to close with this. We, we, we were living and pastoring in Thomasville, Georgia, South Georgia. A great leader had preached on our district that week. I was taking him back to Cleveland, Tennessee. My daughter rode with me where I wouldn't be by myself, riding back. And she was in the back seat listening. And I heard, and we overheard, because he did it right there in the car, him call people in other states and put pressure on them to put certain people in certain places. Why don't we let God choose? My daughter, after this person got out, she said, I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. I had great faith. I've lost my faith in this individual because of what he did in front of her. But you know what? God sees what we do in secret also. Can I tell you the truth? I was disappointed. It made me say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Be faithful. If there's places in your life, if there's places in your life that you're compromising, God has directed you through his word to do certain things or to be a certain way and you don't. You know what it does? It affects your spirit, your mind. I don't know how, well, how else to say it. I will not give in. Three Hebrews boys said. I will not bend. 
I will not bow. And they didn't burn. I know God gave me this message, brother. Amen. Sometimes, you know, when you're up here preaching, you feel your emotion says, well, it's not going over the bow, yeah. It may not touch some of you, but somebody here needed to hear this this morning. Don't let them cause you to compromise. Don't accept the less. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's give God a hand of praise. Boy, He is worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. You ever played golf, brother? Didn't play golf. Somebody called me the other day. He said, are you still passing? I said, yeah. He said, can you talk? I said, well, I'm in a golf tournament. He said, you mean you're passing out on a golf course? I said, yeah, I'm visiting the waters and the greens <laughs> and the forest people. <laughs> if you will lie about a golf game, you will lie about anything. I'm right. Brother David better can't lie. He hunts and fishes every time we play golf together. In the water and in the forest. God is watching us. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Would you stand with me, please? Brother Glenn, Brother Glenn, the Baptist preacher who's filled with the Holy Ghost, is going to be preaching for us tonight. Can't think of his last name. I just felt impressed for him to come preach again. Father, right now in Jesus' name, God do a mighty work in us. God do a powerful work in us, Lord. Help us to stand. Help us to be unmovable. Most especially in these last days when there's such compromise. Help us to hold up the banner. Help us to stand for truth. Help us to hold on to God. God, if we'll hold on to you, you will hold on to us. Now, Father, bless your children right now. Forgive us of our shortcomings and failures. Minister to us, Father, this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anybody who needs prayer? We practice praying for people here. Any prayer?